Alrighty, Hosses, welcome back. And in this video, we're going to be binding the socket to the port. So what does this mean? Basically, what we did is we created a socket and all that did is says, hey, we are going to be connecting to another computer somewhere. So now what we need to do is we need to say, okay, whenever you have that conversation, where is that data going to be coming in? Where is the conversation going to be taking place? And we already declared all the variables up here on our own machine, just listen on port 999. But now we actually have to bind this data to the socket. So this socket knows that this is the data to use. Very simple stuff, but you know, that's what we got to do to port and say and wait for connection from a client. Now the client of course is that target machine. If you got hacked then they probably don't know they're the client, but hopefully it's your friend or something in Texas, so whatever. All right, so def socket bind. And now what we can do is actually just copy this because I can use the same stuff and I'm too lazy to type it. All right, so I'm just gonna print a little indicator at first. So then whenever you run this program, we can see some something pop up in the command line and we know that it didn't freeze or anything. So I'll say uh, binding socket to port. And I'll say ports port because remember this port 9999, this is an integer right now. So we have to convert it to a string before we print it out. And now if I spell that correctly, we can actually do the binding. And the way you, you bind your information is actually really easy. So for your socket, just call the function bind. And then inside here, you actually write a tuple and it just takes the host and the port. So this says bind the socket to the host. And this would usually be an IP address, but since we're just listening on our own machine and this is just running on the server itself, it's just gonna be blank, which is fine. And port 9999. All right, so now all of our information is bound together. We're ready to pretty much listen. So for your socket, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna call listen and just stick a number in there like five and that'll be good enough. So basically what this does right here is what, well, well, I'll break it up. So what listen does is it basically allows your server to accept connections. So we're not actually connecting yet, but now our server is sitting there waiting for someone to connect. Now this five argument right here, this is the number of bad connections that it'll take before refusing any new connections. So you can set it up however you want, but five is a good number. I mean, we're the only ones that are gonna be running it in this example, so whatevs. Now, let me just toss this in again as message, and I'll just say, all right, so whenever we failed at binding, I'll say socket binding error. And then we can print out the error message. And then what can we do after this? Let's pump a new line and get some recursion going on. All right, so if we fail to bind the socket, then what we can do is we can say, hey, that didn't work, but I'm gonna retry it. So we got some recursion going on. It's just gonna call this function again and keep trying until it can bind. So I say can bind, not combined. Just talking to myself here, don't mind me. All right, so so far we created a socket. We said, hey, this server can connect to other computers. And then we said, all right, we're gonna bind the socket to the port. In other words, this is what information or this is where the conversation is going to take place. Looking good. So now the last main function that we have to do here is just to accept connections because right now it's just listening for connections. But what happens when someone actually connects? Well, we will see uh, with client. Socket must be listening uh, for them. All right, so now what we do is we write def socket accept. Now this is another thing that you need to watch out for. A lot of people try to accept connections when 
their socket is not listening for them. So if you leave this line of code out, then it's not gonna work. Your socket needs to be listening before it can actually you know, accept, obviously. So whenever someone ex connects, what we're gonna do is this. All right. So what this function does right here is it accepts a new connection. So whenever some client connects to our server, what it does is it gives you some information. This is the actual connection and this, well, whenever I print it out, you guys are gonna see. All right. So first let me just print out some information so we can know or understand what these variables actually do. So this is gonna wait and it's not gonna continue for the rest of this code we're on with the rest of this code until a connection takes place. So at this point in time, I'll say connection has been established, I guess. And let me just throw my pipe. And how am I gonna format this? All right. And All right. So this variable right here, it's actually broken up into a list and the first element is actually the IP address of whatever computer connected. So it's pretty cool, that's how we can identify it. And after this, is the port number. And I don't know if, I think this is a string already, so I just have to, All right, so the second element is the port number. So, all right, looking good. So whenever we get a connection from a client, it's just gonna print out connection has been established and it's gonna tell you the IP address and the port number right there, looking good. So now, what we wanna do is we wanna pass in, well, we'll make this function in just a second and Close, all right. So this right here is basically information about whoever connected, and this is a reference to the connection itself, so the conversation. So we're gonna make a function in just a second called send commands, and basically what this is gonna do is once a client is connected, then it's gonna sit, like some dude's computer in Texas is gonna sit and say, okay, what do you want me to do? So it's gonna look and wait for commands, and it's gonna do whatever we tell it to, and then once it gets a command, it's gonna run it on its own computer, wherever it is, and then send us the results. So it's basically, <laughs> it's basically an awesome way that we can pretty much access a computer indirectly.